definitely top performed uh, in terms of uh, getting in first, you know, making stabilizing them, and then getting. I think uh, what was he, the finishing sixth first year after, and then last year seven or something like that. Two unbelievable positions. I I said a few times if you have to top six, and now we have Newcastle, but before the rest below top six or top seven with Newcastle. We need to fight to finish seventh and between seventh and twenty. And West Ham, of course, is a bigger club and have more finances than us. But still, to finish six, so kick one of the normal top six club uh, out of that is is a remarkable. Then finish seven, performing in Europe. Uh, they, they went to the semi final, and now they also threw in the Conference League. I, you know, I I understand it's about results, but this league, you know, is on a on a knife edge. Uh, if you are winning enough games or not winning enough games, so if they let's say they have a whatever average year, year and they finish whatever 15, um, I will 100% uh, back uh, uh, David Moyes and, and his staff to continue because there's no club in the Premier League that consistently can stay in one one position unless you are either City or Liverpool or one of these that can be in and around. So I think it's about staying calm and stick to the strategy. Jake. Hi Thomas, just about the Tottenham game then. I mean, another good result against one of the top six teams in you guys. Yeah, very, very pleasing um, to see that um, we were capable of, of making these Top performances and also getting the good results against the top six. I think it's it uh, shows what 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 we are capable of. Um, I think it, it shows what I say the whole time that we believe that we can win every match. I'm very aware we can also lose every match, uh, but if we we keep our structure, our uh, determination, and and sticking to the game plan, have discipline. I think everything is possible. Do you think then? I know people have said that maybe the way you play suits the style to play against teams that are a bit more open, but do you think actually the fact that you have that belief that you can, can win any game actually against the bigger teams, that's it's, it's some of that, that, that that's what helps you and gets you through? I think, it's a, I think it's a bit of both. I think I would love to have, I have fantastic players, I have fantastic group players. I would love to have the top five, top four best group of players uh, and then, then then see what then we, 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 we could do and we are building players that are going to be better and better. I have top players that are actually better than what a lot of people think. Um, but when we don't, when on paper we maybe not are the best team or the best players, we need to be a bit adaptable. I think that's one thing, we're adaptable. Two, uh, the big belief you know, we, we are confident but humble, but we have a big belief that we can win. And we hope to go into every match and being brave and aggressive. And that belief in this group of players, I think that's a big part of it as well, as you said. Who are the players then that might be better than people say? <laughs> I think the good thing is that a lot of them have performed um, in, uh, in the Premier League so far. But there's no doubt that, you know, I think David has shown for a long time that he's up there among the, the best keepers in the division. We speak a lot about Ivan and then most of the time for the, for the fantastic things he's, he's doing on the pitch. I think um, Ethan is an underrated uh, centre-back. I think Rico Henry is the reason why you guys always speaking about when is he the next England uh, left-back. I think Christian Nagard, he you know, means so much. Brandon Buemo, you know, I think Matty Jensen stepped up this season. I think there's a lot of players that have done very well. Okay. Um, and then West Ham, I know you, you just said <coughs> a little bit about them. You sort of suggested they might have over, overperformed in the last few seasons, but are you not slightly surprised with where they find themselves after 14 games, or after 16 games? Yeah, yeah, it, I said maybe overperformed, definitely top performed. Uh, I think they have a, a good group of players, and I said I think they have a fantastic manager that you know is so experienced and he's proven so many times that he knows what he's doing uh, in a lot of uh, in, throughout his whole career. Um, so the challenge, not a problem, the challenge by top performing 
is the expectations will always be, oh, you finish six, perfect, you need to finish six next year. And then maybe name it five, and then four, yeah, you can compete with top six, you know, no problem, they have double or triple the salary that you guys have. Um, that's very, very difficult. Um, and again, the margin for error or success in this league is, is like this. So if it's not swinging your way and you need to play every sing is a third or fourth day because they also are in Europe, it, it's, it's just tough. Um, so uh, it's still, I think, a young season. I know we played, what, 16, 16 games or something like that. But uh, a lot of things can happen in the next 10, uh, 10 games. And obviously you're, you're going there. Another, it's not a top 16, but atmosphere-wise, will be a big, big atmosphere. And yeah. Perhaps a tricky place to go, but how, how can you prepare for maybe a, a sort of nighttime atmosphere of a stadium like that? Uh, yeah, good question. We can talk about it, and the good thing, the good thing is, you need to try it, and you need to be in it. Uh, so the good, good news is that the players have tried a few uh, games like this uh, over the last couple of years. Um, so we need to be prepared for that. Uh, no doubt about that. I agree. Uh, the Western fans are, are very good, and when they're on it, they're <laughs> they're really on it. So we need to be prepared for that. Okay, thank you. That's Ian next. Thomas, how are you? Very well, thank you. Um, You've never really been under pressure here, and if you were, I, I doubt. I think I tested a little bit to start with, didn't I? You know, apart I lost eight out of ten games. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> apart from that. Yeah, apart from that, yeah. You know, apart from that, it's all gone swimming well. Yeah. You. Um, and you never had to sort of, you know, go through being under pressure and people writing about whether you've got three games to save your job, you've just signed another new contract here. Do you think that makes life easier for you as a coach, being able to produce the results for your team? if you kind of are given that leeway and not be under that pressure? Uh, I, oh, let me put it this way. I think every manager or head coach in the world will, you say, maximum have three games and then you maybe get, get sacked and maybe the three games is after you lost five or, and maybe there's uh, coaches like Guardiola or Klopp, they have a little bit more than three. But all our normal human beings, we have maybe two to three games that... Uh, to, to get it right in. Uh, but that said, I think it's a very good question. Uh, I think the, the best an owner or director or board can do to any football coach is to back them, back them, back them, love them, say they're the best, and then sack them. So, so you know, you, you, can't, you can't be after them or in their face because I haven't seen or met one head coach one manager that don't want to win badly the next game or don't want to develop the team or the club. So the more love or backing you can give them throughout, uh, the better. And then if there's one day they think, okay, it's not working anymore, okay, that's part of that job to take that decision. But they can't, you know, be in their face, uh, uh, having demands, all that, because if they have got the right person, they will always want to improve. You're not in this game. If, if you not your whole life have wanted to badly to, to want to improve and, and, and get better. How hard is it playing a team this weekend and then again next weekend in a different competition? Good question. I'll ask you that when you come to the next press front conference uh, before that game. Uh, the first game, of course, is not easy. Um, I think that the FA Cup game, there'll be a few changes without speaking too much about that, uh, but uh, the style will most likely be the same. So I think hopefully it'll be about which team that learned the most uh, from the first match. Um, a player you know by his side, Ben Rama, who was magnificent here for you, he's not really hit those heights at West Ham. Why? Good question. <laughs> I actually, you know, I think actually he's done quite well. Yeah, I think he had a good, um, good run of games where he performed quite well in terms of uh, scoring goals and making assists now. Um, um, so why he hasn't? It's a little bit difficult for me to to completely nail. Uh, of course, I followed, I follow West Ham uh, like any other Premier League club, but of course not close, close like I follow my own team. So yeah, the only thing I know is that he's a good player. You won there last year, the last kick of the game, I think it was Johan Visser, scored the winning goal. Um, so, you should hold no fears going to this game. 
Yeah, um, we, you know, every game we try to go in with no fears, um, big belief that we can win, uh, always go there for the win, uh, like we did last time, to, uh, scored the last kick of the game, uh, but also very, very aware that we are going to a extremely difficult place uh, against a very good team that, that if not fight for their lives, but they are really, you know, fighting and need, need a, good, a good result. They're facing us that, from their perspective, perspective must be a good opportunity to, to get a win but every game we go into we believe we can win uh, and I think the best example of course is at Etihad this season we lost to Gillingham uh, in, in the midweek and we went uh, to, to Etihad against the best team in the world right now and we won so it, it's about believing um, You mentioned Ivan Turner before taking 2022 as a whole um, a first Premier League hat-trick at Norwich um, is England call up, the fact he's still scoring goals despite what is going on off the pitch. Is he one of the standout players in Premier League in 2022? Uh, he must be up there. I think if you look on <coughs> goals and assist and involvement in goals, plus his ability, of course, to defend set pieces, his ability to to press and the willing to 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 go all the way back and, and defend his own box uh, when needed. Um, definitely one of the most influential players. Yeah, I agree. And just two more. How would you sum up your 2022? The whole year for you? Oh, good year. Um, struggled a little bit in the beginning of 2022. We didn't get that many wins. Um, and then uh, we managed to turn around and, and finish the season very well. Uh, and then I think for Brentford, every season that we have and can attack the Premier League is a success. Um, but we want more than just just stay. We want to, uh, how can you say, want to be part of the, the fun. So we would like to attack it and like to... Uh, uh, make the league better by being in it and that, that's what our ambition uh, and try to win as, as high as possible but in many ways it's been yeah a very very good year for, for us uh, and the, the good news is we can still be better and last one from me last time I see you before the end of the year so happy new year what's your new year's resolution what's the one thing you're going to go you're going to set yourself yeah that's good Good question, Ian. Oh, I'm so bad at this. Uh, try to make the world a better place every single day. <laughs> Phil. Thomas. Um, so it's a, it's a home London derby, a away London, but a London derby, a home game and then a home game. So with the restart after a, after a break, um, how beneficial is that? that the, Effectively, you're not spending a lot of time travelling. You have work, you have time on the training ground here, even between the games. When you're bringing these players back together for this really busy start to, to all the restart. I think, you know, it's about in this relentless game and this relentless league, it's about getting all the small margins tipping into your favour. And, and sometimes uh, the programme helps a bit. Um, so, no doubt that. It's a home game, you say, London Derby. Home game, and then London Derby again in the FA Cup. That, that definitely helps. That is not, uh, let's say, we travel away on the Boxing Day, which will always influence the, the Christmas for everyone involved. And uh, then, then maybe play at home and then travel away again. Uh, and maybe travel away again, you never know, that in the FA Cup. That, that, that will, you know, maybe tipped, tipped it a tiny bit. But I'm also... Yeah, very adaptable it is what it is. We, we need to, to be able to win home and away, travel away, uh, long travel um, hours, and short uh, amount of days be, be between the games. We need to be able to perform no matter what. You mentioned Brian as one of the players that maybe doesn't get rated or sometimes not necessarily respected, but some of some the great notices that he's played possibly. Have you noticed a difference in him coming back, having had an experience of being away at the World Cup and the, the impact that has on him as a person? Um, he 
definitely came back in a very good place with a smile on his face and uh, had a very good experience uh, playing for Cameroon at the World Cup against Brazil, get all the big, 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 big teams. Uh, that was a, that was an experience that will stay for, with him forever. Um, I don't know if it was because of that or also because of he started three games, so he just looked super sharp. Um, and I think he was one of the best players against Tottenham. And and I think when he when he performed at that level, he's just such a such a such a threat. Um, and he's so important for the the way we play. Um, he can press. He can he can run in behind. Um, he can create chances and goals. So so yeah. Um, of course, I think for him to to be able to be noticed even more, of course, he needs to produce a few more goals and assist. Uh, but we are working very hard on that, on that, and he's working very hard on that. Yeah. Just that confidence, like, can he get that, that confidence in being away? Is that going to actually help yeah. him moving into 2023? That those goals will flow a bit more? Yeah, hopefully. Uh, and getting on the end of chances. Um, so I think, you I think for example, sometimes it depends on the game and all that. Uh, but but Trondheim game, very good assist. Very good second assist for for the first goal. Way fantastic, you know, just that soft cross to uh, to Matthias Jensen. Um, so hopefully that confidence can keep be, uh, keep building. And, and talking about moving into 2023, obviously we've not maybe seen or the fans haven't seen either what they would like to see from Mikhail Damsgaard. Do, do you get a sense that the new year and um, will almost be a, a, a new kickstart thing, and we're going to see more impact, more inf- influence in him on? Yeah, hopefully. Um, he's a player that, also because he hasn't played that much, uh, only been with us for four or five months, um, um, haven't been impacting as much as we hoped for. But the big but is that we knew that the year's been out, that you know it could take time. Um, and when you need to build your physical levels, not only not only the ability to keep going with the intensity, but also building your body and, and adding kilos, it's not not like this. Uh, plus, you're training every day, and you need to be able to perform. You know, you still need to be able to be be selected. Uh, so that's a longer, uh, a long-term plan for that. But there's also a short-term plan that we want him to be involved as much 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 as possible. So so I think he came back in a fine place, and then he was un- unlucky to get ill uh, for a spell just after the the World Cup. So just a tiny bit uh, setback. But he's in a in a, in, a, in a fine place, and of course we would like him to push uh, as much as possible. Just for me, um, for me a word on, on Dean Smith, obviously, someone you know very, very well, yeah. with here. Um, disappointing to see Dean obviously you know, lose his job, I mean, I know it's the vagaries of, of football management, isn't it? But I mean, you know, as, a, as a person, as a football coach, football benefits from having Dean in it. Yeah, definitely, I, you know, it's always make me uh, sad when other coaches or managers are are sacked because <laughs> it's it's a tough world. I know it's part of the part of the business. If if you don't want that risk, we shouldn't uh, step into it. Uh, and Dean is very experienced and, and know that of course. Um, I think looking from the outside, maybe I'm biased because I'm pro Dean. I think it's maybe a tiny bit harsh. I think it's it's you know uh, understand that every club needs to be ambitious, but when you Get promoted, get relegated, get promoted, get relegated, and then do that third time in a row. I think that's almost impossible. That's against any universal law, uh, but it doesn't take away the expectations. So I think he's done a a, a good job there. Uh, of course, I don't know everything. I I am convinced uh, he will come back to football quick. Uh, maybe he should take a break just to. Brief in, uh, but it's up to Dean to uh, to decide that. Um, of course, he's been in the business for many, many, many years in a row. Uh, basically, didn't get any break between, between the Villa and the Norwich job. Um, but I'm convinced he'll come back stronger, and he, he loves football too much, and he he will come back and, and get another another good job.